Hey YouTube! Get started on this project. I thought I'd give you a little background information on it. Uh, some of you may have seen the uh, video I posted on the Magnavox console stereo. Well, it, it's got a noise in the left channel and I want to fix that. I've uh, listed on eBay but it didn't sell so I decided to go ahead and fix it right and then uh, try to sell it again. The uh, best I can tell, I need a, needed a signal tracer of some sort to try to trace that down. So I, I found one on on eBay. The guy wanted fifty dollars for it. I, I haggled with him and got him down to thirty. So I bought that. Um, it arrived today, but uh, unfortunately, it's got uh, bad hum in the uh, sound. So the filter capacitors will need to be changed. I've got those ordered, but uh, it'll be a few days before they get here. So then I've also got the same, well, not the same problem, but uh, the problem of getting the old one out. Uh, it's a large can dual section cap, cap and it uh, it uh, has a several uh, other components, you know soldered onto the lugs of the capacitor so uh, I was going to go ahead and just use my Dremel and, and uh, saw around the edge of the can and then use that to mount the new ones but I can't get all the way around it because of the uh, the back of the uh, unit and so I'm going to have to go ahead and dis desolder it and uh, take them apart uh, so let me uh, let me uh, get to, get to uh, a sample of what it sounds like now before I start tearing it down. I have removed the glowing eye tube which is the visual indication of the sound for this particular heat kit model. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the sound circuit so it shouldn't should matter. Um, so without further ado let me let me show you what that sounds like. All right. The uh, unit is on. You can hear the sound it's making. The volume really doesn't do anything. That's just pure AC hum in the uh, audio circuit. The uh, so all I have to do is take that cap out. All those wires and resistors and whatever else is down there. And uh, replace that, those at the dual section can. So shut this off. So anyway, like I say, once I desolder all those components from it, I think some of them will come out with it uh, with them still attached. I took pictures, the close-up pictures, to make sure. And I've got a schematic too, as I'll show you in the video of this unit so it shouldn't be a problem so uh, I'm guessing without any further ado let's heat the soldering iron up and see if we can get some of this desoldered okay I got my soldering iron heating up. Ah. Excuse my arm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course. First thing I discovered when I started deciding to mess with this is I can't find my desoldering bulb. I have. Uh, Two teenage girls that visit once in a while and clean for me, my granddaughters, and something just happens, things go missing, I have no idea where they went to, I just bought the thing, they probably took one look at it, oh that's cute, what is that, next thing I know it's gone, so anyway, I'm going to try to 
work on this a little bit without uh, the aid of the desoldering bulb which really all I need to do is take a few wires off I think uh, once I get the wires off I can straighten the tabs up and uh, remove the can uh, in its entirety without actually taking all of the stuff off of course it depends on how well it's you know the original builder of this kit um, decided to uh, wrap his leads in addition to soldering a lot of people you know really believe in a good mechanical joint as well as solder so that will you know I got my handy little tool here to help me get it out so we'll see what happens. I don't know if the soldering are hot yet or not. We'll try it and see. Yeah, it's doing something. Ouch! It's hot. This needs to get out of the way. Oh, maybe do it. Or I'll be getting hot here very shortly. It's already started. So let me get this out. See if I can grab that. So, there you go. So that worked out all right. One down. Now that resistor there can stay, but these over here have to be gotten off. So, see what I can do on that side. Anytime there's multiple connections, it's a little harder to get the solder to melt because naturally there's more metal there to absorb the heat. And you know, it's just not going very well. So maybe I'll concentrate on this one instead. Let's see, this one here, it goes here too. Let's see if I can get that one off. I really need to clean my soldering tip. I usually wet a paper towel and clean it up really good before I start, but I didn't this time. desolder or solder. So it's almost impossible to know which way that wire was put in. So I'll just sort of wiggle it one way and wiggle it the other. See which one works. At the moment neither one.
the easy thing would be to do is to cut that. I'm trying to avoid that. And see. This one needs to be getting out of the way. I'll get it in my soldering iron. Ouch. Get into that is hot. Yeah, it's wrapped around there pretty good. Comes finally. All right. Now this one down here has to come loose from at least this resistor I'm talking about has to come lo loose from at least the this pole here because that has to go through the chassis. Or at least I think it does. Anyway. This looks like the easiest one to get off first, so let's try that one. Ah, right, come on, get on there. Definitely need this transform lead. It's going to be pretty stiff. I think it's braided, but I don't know how well it's going to be to get out. See, I can't even get the solder. Let me take a break here and clean my solder tip. Should have done that to begin with. Oh, yeah. She'd be dirty. Alright, this will be a little bit better, I hope. About moving around. What's it gonna do about it? Well, that's not working out real good. Let's see what else I got. Yeah, I can see where it goes around there. Okay, you can see the general idea of what I'm doing. I think it would be a lot easier for me to do this without the camera because it's just almost impossible to move this thing around the way I need to. So let me let me move it. You see what I'm doing, so let me move it and we'll go from there. Okay. Now we can see that all the uh, parts that will keep it from coming loose have been removed. Uh, now I need to take those screws out and tab, bend those tabs to where that can will lift out of there. And that should not be too hard of a job, I hope. 
and I'll bring you back to show you the results in just a minute. As you can see, <clears throat> I was able to get the capacitor out without taking the screws out. Or another way of looking at it, it would have been probably a little, I wouldn't have had to bend those little tangs back in to get the capacitor out without doing that. In other words, that little socket uh, comes out and it, it uh, would let the whole thing come out. But, you know, it come out not too hard. So, next thing is, I plan to get some terminal strips, or at least one, maybe three lugs, to attach, reattach all this stuff back to, with the uh, new caps. And uh, when they arrive, they have been shipped. Should be here later this week, or maybe next week, I'm not really sure. But anyway, once they arrive, shouldn't take too long to finish this little project up, and hopefully it'll work fine. Alright, a little update. I did remove the uh, can socket, if you call it that, whatever it was, from from the chassis because I figure it would make it easier to mount the terminal lugs. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that, but I haven't ordered any anyway yet, so. I used to have all that stuff, but of course, you know, not anymore. It's went the way of the desoldering bulb, I guess. But, uh, anyway, once uh, all this stuff arrives, I can get this project fixed and done with and hopefully have a working signal tracer. Stay tuned.